heart rhythm disorder that you can have and while it won't kill you by itself it can definitely lead to other issues dr andrew darby is here from the uva heart and vascular center to talk a little bit about it and for people who don't know what you commonly refer to as afib atrial fibrillation explain what the condition is yeah um i think it's very appropriate we're having this conversation because next month september is atrial fibrillation awareness month yeah. and uh, that was established to increase awareness of this very common condition which affects millions of uh, americans and it's the most common heart arrhythmia we see in adults. Mm -hmm. um, it becomes more common with age. By the time people reach age 80, about 10% of people have developed atrial fibrillation, although we see it in patients of, of all, all ages. Um, what it actually is, um, by way of background, the heart has normal electricity that travels through it uh, that basically, basically generates each heartbeat until it maintains the normal timing of, of the heartbeat. Uh, atrial fibrillation is caused by abnormal electricity that's generated in the upper chambers of the heart that makes the upper chambers of the heart start to beat very rapidly and chaotically. Um, I tell patients to think of it as, as sort of akin to an electrical storm inside the heart. Interesting. So what are the symptoms? And obviously you feel your heart speeding up and I'm sure that can scare a lot of people, but other than that, what are the symptoms and what are the problems that this causes folks? Yeah, so you, you mentioned one of the common ones, uh, the symptom of palpitations, which mm -hmm. uh, patients generally report as a, a rapid uh, heartbeat or an irregular heartbeat. That's the most common symptom. Uh, some patients describe it as uh, almost like a fish flopping around in their chest when they have it. Uh, and this can last seconds to minutes, sometimes even hours uh, at a time. And that's the most common symptom. Uh, some patients are less aware of the palpitations um, and instead experience more shortness of breath, uh, sometimes just a, a profound fatigue and tiredness when they have it. Um, unfortunately, some patients actually don't really have much in the way of symptoms and the first sign of it may be a stroke. That's really the main risk with atrial fibrillation. That's a scary thought. Yeah, um, it is, unfortunately. Um, uh, in general, um, we think of atrial fibrillation as being a non-life-threatening heart condition, but the main risk with it is the risk of stroke. It's actually one of the more common causes of stroke. Is there a test that people can take so they would know they're at risk for stroke or that they have it if they don't know? Yeah, um, it's a good question. So, um, in general, um, we can detect atrial fibrillation either on an EKG or a heart monitor. Um, sometimes we can give patients a heart monitor that they can wear uh, on an ambulatory setting, sort of mm -hmm. at home, uh, which can detect atrial fibrillation. And I think. Patients who are at risk for atrial fibrillation, uh, particularly patients with high blood pressure, uh, obesity, patients with sleep apnea, uh, people with other types of heart conditions like a prior heart attack or heart valve condition, mm -hmm. all can be at, at an increased risk of atrial fibrillation, should be aware of the symptoms and should probably be monitored periodically and see their physician periodically and be assessed for atrial fibrillation. Thank you so much for coming out here, Dr. Darby. We really you. do appreciate your time. Thank you. Steve?